final trend that we are going to be talking about today is snacking. Okay, that's a big millennial food trend, mm-hmm. and uh, who doesn't like snacking? I mean, we've all been there late at night, no, on Swiggy or Zomato, calling for like a waffle or something, some watching Netflix. You need to eat something after your dinner, after everything. You know, we've been there, or in between, like you know, meetings and work when we don't have time to eat proper meals, sit down. So we're always on the go, probably grab a protein bar, or whatever you know is available, yeah. easily available. Yeah. So uh, what I want to discuss is snacking, and what are your takes on snacking? So something I want to go into a little detail about is something called the autonomic nervous system in our body. There are, it's divided into two different parts. One is the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic. Now the sympathetic is when your body is going to fight or flight, when there's like you're always doing something or you're in stress or you're busy doing something, right? The other one is when it's called the parasympathetic nervous system, when your body is relaxed, when your mind is relaxed, when you're comfortable as to where you are. That's when the major digestion takes place. So now millennials, when you're grazing your Always, what do we do? We're either driving with a latte in our hand or a coffee in our hand, or we're like eating on the go, or we have like a ten Grand minute break, yeah, yeah, ten minute break between work, all of that. These you're actually putting your body under chronic sympath- sympathetic uh, dominance, right? So your body is not in the parasympathetic mode at all. So it's not digesting your food really well. So this is one of the main issues I feel with snacking currently, and especially mm-hmm. in millennials when you're running around doing all of this. Mm-hmm. That is one issue. The second thing I believe is when you're snacking, you end up uh, having like a high carb snack. So your body goes, it just has like a quick insulin spike, and then it has a quick drop as well. So you end up snacking again instead of eating a whole meal. So that's another issue which you and you'll keep doing that all day. This increases your total calorie intake. And it just—it's not good for your body because yeah, that's, not giving that's, it time. Yeah, that's the right? most important thing. Is see, personally, I love snacking. It's like my body, you know, wants food continuously. And you know, if I go for a long period, like four or five hours, I get like really acidic and I feel low in energy. Hangry. So yeah, hangry. <laughs> hangry is the term. So uh, I definitely like to snack, but what uh, over the period of time. I train my body not to snack so often mm-hmm. because I know I don't want that insulin rise again yeah, and that yeah, drop, yeah. basically that high and that crash. Okay, but what's very important I've realized is if I don't plan well and I don't know uh, what snacks I'm going to be having throughout the day, then when I'm hangry, whatever's available, whatever yeah. I'll just call for something or whatever you know. I think a chocolate or something will give me that satisfaction and I feel because like you know I feel of, uh, exactly it needs that sugar you know and yeah. I need that energy so. If you plan well, and if you have something like nuts and fruit or whatever with you, and I know that okay, if I get hungry, I'll eat that. I'm good, and I can sustain till my next meal. I'm fine. But if I don't plan, it's vi- I have a very high chance of messing up. Yeah. What do you think about snacking? So uh, yeah, snacking is a millennial thing. Everyone wants to like you know graze through the day. I have seen good effects and bad effects. The bad effects mostly because uh, I've seen that. You know, they think okay, uh, kurmura hmm. is a good snack. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, and you can eat in between your meals. Correct. Okay, they can okay a protein bar is a superb supplement yeah. Correct. as a snack. Correct. Okay, and they will say okay. Um, what I believe is that you should have your four square meals: breakfast, lunch, snacks, and dinner. And there should be grain present, anaj. Because it anad grains takes three hours to digest. Yeah. So if you place them four hours apart, so it takes care of your whole day. And in between snacking, if you are hungry up between four hours of the, that uh, period, then you could actually have uh, fillers such as nuts, fruit, buttermilk, uh, coconut water, tea, coffee, and salad, soup. These could be the snacking options rather than having anything solid. Because, because they don't have grain, right? Yes, they okay. don't have grain. Also, uh, then. Uh, a lot of people come because who snack a lot. They come with acidity issues because they haven't digested the food and they have actually topped up. Something you know, else. giving your ti- body time body to like time regenerate, to heal, yes. digest it. Yeah, because like constantly uh, like whamming it with more. Our ancestors yeah. they used to eat. You know, they never had a snacking option. They never yeah. had a fridge full <laughs> or a pantry full. You know, or, it was or the food manufacturers now coming up with healthy protein bars and healthy God and knows what not different snacks. So it's very important for now for us to actually. Read, read the labels. Read, yeah, I read, think that's very important. Very read the important. labels and see what has like if there are, if if it says added sugar and it has a high amount of added sugar, please avoid completely. And sometimes I think just ditch things with labels. Yeah, you know? yeah, Go actually. Off that, I yeah. think. Also, another thing I wanted to uh, just bring it to your notice in calorific terms, as we are talking, your lunch should be the highest calorific value of the whole day. So your breakfast should be heavier than your evening snacks, and your lunch should be heavier than your dinner. Yeah. This is the way you maintain the steady flow of energy. But what 
what people do is okay start small then smaller lunch and then they're hungry then snack 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 and, and then big dinner is that evil you yeah. know that five to so, seven so where it's you it's like you know uh, you start the car uh, you fill up the petrol in the car at the beginning of the journey not at the end so that's yeah. what i tell my client that Correct. you make sure that you know you you're eating eat, well yeah the then thing. also you have a good uh, body shape because see breakfast is this big lunch is the biggest <laughs> evening snacks is smaller than the dinner so it gives you a nice hourglass figure so this is how i explain my client and one interesting thing i've seen when i've done uh, a lot of dna uh, you know sampling for yeah. patients and dna diets uh, what i've seen is there are specific people who have a snacking tendency and there are specific people who have larger appetites yes. and require big meals Because so if you give a person who has snacking tendency only two meals to eat and yeah. do intermittent fasting they're going to fail because yeah. they're going to feel hungry and a person who has a bigger appetite if you give them small meals throughout the day they're yeah. going to fail. fail okay so again little individual in snacking but i would say across the board choose. don't snack yeah. so yeah. often yeah. and choose yeah. healthier and choose the right options. options depends on yeah. your how long is your day like today we had a client come in from mahindra and mahindra her day starts at 8 and ends at 10 huh. so we had to plan five meals for her oh, yeah. because you see she has a very your lifestyle your your already your depending on routine. how long is your day and what is your take on late night snacking because millennials are up till 3 yeah. 4 they that's want like the normal so night. i tell all my clients who are uh, very late so suppose if they are late nighters then they start late so i start their day from 11 Okay. So you basically be like between your breakfast and be, between your dinner and your breakfast the next day or your snack should gap. be a 12 hour, 12 hour gap. 12 hour gap at least. So right? you're eating your snack at like 11 12 you're going to eat your breakfast yeah, in the morning. Yeah. Even at if I'm awake my take on this is that for my personal this thing and I guide my clients that if you are habituated to have your dinner by 9 so finish your dinner and if, oh, even if you are awake till say 2 or 3 yeah. you should not have anything uh, grainy so you can have alcohol you can have juices you can have fruits you can have alcohol. soups you can have salad you can have nuts but not have solid food again until you are awake till 4 or 5 then have your breakfast and then sleep, sleep. Ah. <laughs> oh nice <laughs> okay fine